Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Suriname's president going back on trial for murder, our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Tuesday, June 27. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Sharon Coward. Good evening. A Suriname military court will on Wednesday resume hearing evidence in the murder trial of President Desi Bautasi for his alleged role in the 1982 murders of 15 political opponents of his then military government. He and 23 co-defendants are going back on trial after the Court of Justice rejected a motion for the case to be stopped. It is expected that military prosecutor Roy Elging will be given the opportunity to present his case when the hearing resumes. When the process was interrupted last year, he was about to argue the case. The prosecutor says he has a statement of over 30 pages ready. Meanwhile, Hugo Esed, a lawyer representing the victim's relatives, is optimistic that the court could reach a verdict within a few months. He told reporters that whether it is an acquittal or jail sentence, justice should be served. In June last year, the government invoked Article 148 of the Constitution, claiming that the continuation of the trial posed grave risks to the country's national security. After the request for an immediate end to the proceedings was rejected, and then that decision appealed, the Court of Justice last month ruled that the criminal case should be continued by the military court. Bautise has admitted political responsibility for the murders since he was head of government at the time of the massacre, but has denied any personal involvement in the killings. Since the start of the proceedings in 2008, he has never shown up in court, always being represented by his lawyers. A High Court judge is expected to deliver a ruling Friday in the application by St. Vincent's ruling Unity Labour Party government to dismiss the opposition New Democratic Party's election petitions. Justice Esco Henry is also expected to give her decision on a counter-application by lawyers for the NDP that the motion to strike out the petitions is an abuse of the process. A lawyer involved in the matter confirmed to CMC News that the High Court has informed parties that the ruling will be handed down on Friday. The NDP filed the petitions challenging the results in Central Leeward and North Windward in the December 2015 general elections, elections which were won by the ULP. The petitions were initially heard by Justice Brian Cottle, who in June last year ruled in favor of the respondents and threw them out as improperly filed. The Court of Appeal on March 7 reverted the case to the High Court for hearing before a different judge. It ruled that Justice Cottle showed apparent bias in his decision to throw out the petitions as improperly filed. Lawyers for both sides have said they will appeal if the court does not rule in their favor. Over in Grenada, opposition legislators staged a walkout of Senate on Tuesday during debate on a hydrocarbon incentive bill. They were protesting a ruling by Senate President Chester Humphrey that the contribution by leader of the main opposition at National Democratic Congress, Nazim Burke, was irrelevant. While Burke was speaking in the debates, leader of government business, Simon Steele, rose on a point of relevance, saying that his contribution was not relevant to the legislation. Despite Burke's arguments, the Speaker agreed with Steele. The opposition leader responded by saying he would say nothing further on the bill and he was told to take his seat. However, Burke insisted, packed his bag and walked out of the chamber and was followed by two other NDC legislators. Canada has ended visa-free travel for citizens of Antigua and Barbuda. The North American country says it took the decision after carefully monitoring the integrity of Antigua and Barbuda's travel documents. And while questions have been raised about whether the country's citizenship by investment CIP program had anything to do with the move, 
Prime Minister Gaston Brown says Canada's decision should not be seen as any indictment on the economic citizenship scheme. We get more from Garfield Bufford of ABS News. As of Tuesday morning, citizens of Antigua and Barbuda will need a visa to travel to Canada. Any existing electronic travel authorization, ETA, which had been issued to an Antigua and Barbuda passport holder will no longer be valid as of Tuesday as well. However, Canada says it continues to welcome visitors from Antigua and Barbuda and remains firmly committed to its partnership with the Twin Island State. Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown says the move by Canada is in no way a reflection of hostility on their part. Now you have to understand that we are now living in a period of heightened um, security concerns, one in which we have increased acts of um, terrorism. Uh, Canada has, had, has its, its uh, fair share. Uh, just recently in the United Kingdom, you recognize that have had several acts of um, terrorism. So most countries now that are targeted by terrorists, they are seeking to strengthen their visa regime and to ensure that they determine who comes into their country. The option that we would have had now to be considered for visa-free access would have been possibly to give up our CIP program to lose $150 million a year in order to have visa-free access into Canada. And I don't know that you know, that is a situation that we could consider at this time. The Prime Minister indicated that the Canadians have been harboring concerns for some time now and surmises the decision would have been taken earlier had it not been for the interventions of his government. ABS sought additional information about the extent to which concerns over the CIP played a role in this decision by Canada. There could be no other issue. You can be assured that if, for example, we had done something wrong, they would have chided us, they would have made it public, they would, have, um, they would have published information. So, for example, when they had discontinued the um, uh, visa-free access of St. Kitts to Canada, there was a specific event that triggered it. At that time, there was an allegation that $2 million was paid for a diplomatic passport. We do not have those improprieties to deal with. For them, it's an issue of risk that they see associated with our CIP program. And whereas we don't think the risk is as significant as they may have assessed it, we understand, too, that there's a degree of paranoia. The Prime Minister is cautioning against attempts at scoring cheap political points from this matter. He insisted the Canadians are willing to work closely with Antigua and Barbuda going forward and says fresh opportunities are likely to emerge in other areas. We have uh, several countries now that have agreed to offer visa-free access um, to Antiguans and Barbudans. Uh, they may not be, you know, as um, enticing as a Canadian visa-free access, but certainly we have global citizens now who are citizens of Antigua and Barbuda who travel to these countries. I know Ukraine and um, Indonesia and so on and several other countries. Uh, we're now approaching China as well. So, in essence, we will actually see an expansion of the visa-free access for Antiguan citizens globally rather than a contraction. In Trinidad and Tobago, a female security guard who was shot during an exchange of gunfire between an escaped prisoner and police officers outside the Port of Spain General Hospital two years ago is now suing the state. The woman claims police were reckless. We get the details in this report from CNC3's Hima Ramkesun. It's been almost two years since the infamous prison break. Now, new allegations have surfaced. As a 38-year-old mother of three, is seeking justice for the wrongs that she believes were committed by law enforcement officers. In a six-page letter obtained by CNC3, Anita Bartholomew recounts the events of July 2015. In the letter, she claims that Alan Scanny Martin was unarmed. When he entered the guard booth and pushed her in the corner, she claims that she was a human shield. She says at that point, police officers pointed a gun through the window, and without any warning or any attempt to pacify the situation, they opened fire. Bartholomew claims that she kept screaming for officers to stop shooting. She says at no point was Alan Scanny Martin a threat to her or to the police officers. In the latter, she says that after the hail of bullets, Scanny fell to the ground. And even after that, officers continued to fire. When the bullets stopped, it was only then Bartholomew claims that she realized that she had also been shot. Bartholomew says as a result of the gunshot wound, she's unable to perform daily routines and she's been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. She is describing the actions of the TTPS as reckless and in contradiction to the use of force and use of deadly force policies. Her attorneys have given the AG's office seven days to respond. Jamaicans protest rising crime in their communities. That story and more when we return. Stay with us.
Beautiful Barbados and 4D Entertainment welcome you to the Flow Soca on the Hill. Sunday, July 23rd, 2017, where the mega stars of Crop Over 2017 assemble with the Caribbean's best, Patrice, Skinny Fabulous, Ricky T, Orlando Octave, and Ultimate Rejects to bring you the world's greatest soca party, the Flow Soca on the Hill. Let's gather the people. If so, it is important that you know about Glucerna. Glucerna is a nutritional supplement for people with diabetes and contains carb steady, which helps minimize blood sugar spikes. Manage your diabetes with Glucerna. Glucerna, nutrition for people with diabetes, designed for you. Chatting Caricom, your chance to get answers to questions about the regional integration process and how it affects you. Why is the process taking so long? Countries tend to retain a sense of identity, even if they have a common region, common ancestry, or common cultures. Join CARICOM and CARIB Vision for Chat in CARICOM, Wednesday, June 28 at 8 p.m. It's a bit more of community forum where perhaps persons can really learn about this thing called CSME. Chat in CARICOM, Wednesday, June 28 at 8 p.m. Not at the political level. But at the grassroots level, we are the ones that need to make the idea of the CSM become a reality. Chatting Caricom, a community for all. On building one Caribbean. Residents in sections of downtown Jamaica have taken to the streets to protest prolonged violence in their communities. They say enough is enough and have called on the government to help. An 11-year-old girl was killed last Friday when a group of masked men attacked other men in the Fleet Street area of central Kingston. 30, 304 children from babies to age 17 years have been murdered in Jamaica over the last five years. Joel Crossgill of CVM News reports. Outside of the memorial for the nation's slain youth in downtown Kingston, the anguish of a community which lost one of its younger members to gun violence spilled out onto the streets as residents protested Thursday's murder of 11-year-old Taisha Hughes, a student of the Holy Family Primary and Infant School. As a church, we are tired of it. People are saying that the church has not been doing anything at all. Today, this morning, we, I, I am sick and tired. But perhaps none are more sick and tired than the females of the community who spend almost every waking hour fearful that an ongoing gang feud within the Raytown division may cut short the lives they brought into the world. Thursday night after 10, our mother sent her to go buy her slips because she wants some of the eat. She had a house and she had all her little things and her mother said, hey, you go and go buy the little snacks and come back in. She come out to go buy her little snacks to go eat. And the wicked them come from the scheme and shoot up little baby, them see her. Them see the baby and them get her two shot and kill her. They called her Angel and her loss has sent a seismic shock throughout the community. You know it hurts when somebody thumping in your belly? 
Eh? Just imagine if you get a shot in you know, your wickedness. Because she cried out eh? and nobody was there to help. She cried Curl up. Out. She cried out and nobody Curl was there up. Nobody didn't know she get shot and one girl up past. So she grabbed up on the girl foot. And I saw the girl up and Angel stopping the man and get up. And when she goes down, so she gets shot to the girl when she gets shot. They say the killing of innocents has gone on for too long. And they're fed up with the callous actions of gunmen. Wicked them, wicked man. But if we do angel, let them see angel. Let them see her, but they know angel. And mother now I'm the gun man. Eh? And she and her baby alone to try with her little baby. The whole of them with her, the whole of her cry, her gate she dead. She dead, her gate man, the whole thing scream, her gate she dead. And enough of them want to talk. But all the girls, all the later are coming to she in her, she in her house. And mother will send her out. She never go all the far. She never abandon her. She never get. She come out for a buy one snack to eat her own weekend. Still in Jamaica, opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips is accusing the Andrew Holness government of seeking to rush the passage of an anti-crime bill currently before the Parliament after allowing it to languish in the House of Representatives. He says the Zones of Special Operation bill was tabled in the House of Representatives months ago, but the government did nothing with it despite concerns raised by the opposition. Earlier this month, the police disclosed that the murder rate is up 19% so far in 2017 and that Jamaica could register over 1,800 homicides this year. Phillips has accused the government of now seeking to rush the bill simply to say that it is doing something amid the escalating murder rate. We expressed concern from the beginning. No, all of us come as the crime gets higher and higher, the president wants a select committee and the select committee must finish the bill in one week or two. Now that would suggest that it is the legislation is being put there as a face cap. Former Bermuda Premier Dr. Ewart Brown has called for a commission of inquiry to examine the conduct of the police and the Attorney General's department over what he termed their endless investigation of him. His attorney has written to Governor John Ranking describing an ongoing inquiry as a targeted campaign against him and his businesses and questioning whether it was, quote, a persecution rather than a prosecution, end quote. Jasmine Patterson of Bermuda Broadcasting News has that story. Lynch QC says the combination of action taken by the Attorney General's office stemming from one allegation of bribery in 2011 is suspicious. Since that time, there has been a relentless campaign against Dr. Brown, which has included the arrest of his doctor director, Dr. Reddy. It has included a commission of inquiry. It has included the issue of search warrants of his premises. Allegations made against him uh, and against the Lay Clinic in Massachusetts and the unilateral slashing of fees um, by the Bermuda Health Council. He says there is no alternative but to call for a commission of inquiry to see whether the police and the Attorney General's department can justify the investigations. Millions upon millions of dollars have been expended by the state in seeking to persecute Dr. Brown. He has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in defending himself against such allegations. The time has come when there has to be a proper inquiry into why any citizen, let alone one who has served his country, should be subjected to such a campaign. And given the island spent $2.3 million into examining Dr. Brown, Mr. Lynch says the cost of a new commission of inquiry is justified if the governor finds merit in the case. I'm asking this governor, who is relatively new, to take a fresh look at the situation here uh, and bringing to bear all of his uh, diplomatic experience and to say, uh, clearly there is an issue and that issue needs to be resolved. How are we best to do that? Do we just let the police carry on for another six years or do we wait till Dr. Brown dies? I mean, how much longer do we leave it to go? Or does he say enough? Uh, and what we will do is to see if there is any real merit in this a year ago, Dr. Brown said, put up or shut up. And you can't really blame him for saying that. Now, after five years of investigation, he's entitled to say, you know, either you've got a case against me or you haven't. 
And ahead in Newsline Sport, West Indies head coach Stuart Law says the Caribbean side is lacking the cutting edge. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome to Swiftpack, your online shopping and shipping solution. Receive the best rates, expert cargo management, and exceptional customer service. Swiftpack provides secure handling of your smallest packages to your largest cargo with speed and reliability. We invite you to use our U.S. mailbox service, online shopping, ship air and ocean cargo from the supplier to your door. We handle it all for you. Get started now. Sign up for a free regular account or premium account or give us a call on 440. 6100. Swift back. You shop, we ship, you save. Ravenel's Resort and Conference Center is the mecca of conferences in the island of Tobago. The state-of-the-art facility caters to executive forums, weddings, banquets, training, elegant dining, and tranquil accommodations. Guests at Ravenel's Resort can choose from self-catering, standard, deluxe, and executive rooms. Sit at the poolside and savor the ambiance of nature or enjoy a sumptuous meal on the terrace and inside a Bouvardia restaurant. Let's go to Ravenel's Resort and Conference Center, the tranquil Caribbean resort. Call 868-63 or visit our website at www.rovenelsresorttobago.com. Dancing and whining and fretting till the morning. Like. Drinking, masquerading, live music always playing. If like. Islands of blue seas where people are smiling. Like. Street jams and bandstands where people will be jamming. Don't you miss this time? Festival of Legacy Following a team bowling effort which paved the way for the West Indies 105 run defeat to India in the second one international on Sunday, head coach Stuart Law says the Caribbean side is lacking the cutting edge. The Windies watched as the visitors piled up 310 for five, with opener Ajinkya Rahani top scoring with 103. Captain Virat Kohli struck a 66 ball 87, while left handed opener Shikhar Dahwan chimed in with 63. You know, that's, that's, that's probably the first time that that's happened since I've been here. So uh, you, can, you can live with that to a certain extent. But, you know, we've got to be better than that with the ball. Um, you know, the way we started, um, you know, the way we set the tone for our innings wasn't, wasn't how we wanted to do it. Um, and I think at times we, uh, you know, our, our plans probably didn't quite, uh, quite work out. So, as you say, you know, we, didn't, we didn't get bowled out. Um, you know, some of our boys haven't played a lot of international cricket. So to get some time in the middle against some quality bowlers, um, is good for the confidence and you know, when we batted I thought you know, Shea Hope uh, played extremely well. Law in his fourth series with the Caribbean side after taking over earlier this year said the experience gained in the defeat would be beneficial to the young team. He contends that the West Indies still possess enough ability to challenge the Indians especially against the backdrop of their encouraging performances against Pakistan recently. You know, we've, we've got to understand that you know India are you know, number three in the world for for a reason. Um, you know, and they've been hovering around that you know top three for for quite a while now. And you've got some of the best players, if not the best players in the world, up there. So we we know that we're going to have to play really well and compete really hard to to get anything out of these these games. But there's no reason why we can't. Um, you know, we pushed Pakistan all the way um, when they were out here recently. Uh, we beat them uh, chasing down 300. And, 10 in, a, in, in the first ODI against them and the last two we, we nearly we nearly got over the line as well so there's those performances are in us um, I, I think you know we're, we're lacking a, a little bit of something um, a little bit of edge um, with our bowling uh, and with our batting we're, we're not quite getting off to good starts consistently so if we nailed those two things um, you know getting off to good starts with a bat in the top first 10 overs um, you know, and really, really bowl hard all, all the way through our, our 50 overs, um, you know, we can compete with anyone. And still in cricket, Chedian Nation has responded to suggestions that Wendy's women were overawed by the occasion in their heavy eight-wicket defeat to Australia women in Monday's ICC Women's World Cup encounter. The Jamaican is confident the Caribbean side will bounce back to face India women in their next game on Thursday. We're coming in good form. Um, wasn't state right we've been here before we know we're about 
So it's just one of those games, and we bounced back from that. Um, all in all, I think the girls saw where they, they went wrong, and we'll go back to the drawing board for sure in the training tomorrow and work on our mistakes. Several Wendy's batsmen got starts but failed to carry on as Haley Matthews top scored with 46. Captain Stefani Taylor got 45, Nation scored 39, and Deandra Dotton 29. Despite the effort, Nation says the rotation simply wasn't enough. It wasn't um, so difficult batting. It was a good wicket to bat on. Um, I think we just didn't rotate the strike enough. Um, we saw that how the Australians batted up front. They rotated the strike. They were a bit more positive than how we were. I think the Aussies were bowling really good. They were bowling real straight at us. And it was kind of difficult to, um, to get the singles at that point in time. And switching sports now, ousted CONCACAF President Jeffrey Webb will have to wait until next year to know his fate as his sentencing has been delayed yet again. Last year, Webb pleaded guilty to racketeering conspiracy, wire fraud conspiracy and money laundering conspiracy charges leveled by United States prosecutors. The U.S. Department of Justice said Webb agreed to forfeit $6.7 million U.S. dollars as part of his plea deal. The former FIFA vice president and executive committee member was one of several football officials arrested by Swiss police in a pre-dawn raid and subsequently indicted for allegedly being part of an elaborate racketeering and corruption scheme. Webb was extradited to the U.S. to face the charges. He pleaded not guilty and was placed on $10 million U.S. million bond. And that's the sport and we'll be right back in just a moment. Stay with us. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Chatting Caricom, your chance to get answers to questions about the regional integration process and how it affects you. Why is the process taking so long? Countries tend to retain a sense of identity, even if they have a common region, common ancestry, our common cultures. Join CARICOM and CARIC Vision for Chat in CARICOM Wednesday, June 28 at 8 p.m. It's a bit more of community forum where perhaps persons can really learn about this thing called CSM. Chat in CARICOM Wednesday, June 28 at 8 p.m. It's not at the political level, but at the grassroots level. We are the ones that need to make the idea of the CSM become a reality. Chat in CARICOM a community for all. On building one Caribbean. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television, and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. Our top story is as we leave you, a Suriname military court to resume hearing evidence in the murder trial of President Desi Bautasi. And in sport, West Indies head coach Stuart Law says the Caribbean side lacks the cutting edge. That's Caribbean News 9. For more news and sports, check our website at carnenews.com. Thanks for viewing. We'll be here again tomorrow. Hope to see you then. From all of us at CMC News, good night.